in the case that I posted on my LinkedIn last night that I found just last night, a few things need to be acknowledged. First of all, it references Oklahoma. And I believe that, that case specifically was in some manner connected to efforts to traffic me since I was a child on a military base in Illinois during the first Gulf War. I had very vivid experiences with being compelled to engage in certain actions and activities that I had no reference point for in my actual life. I'd never seen anybody do those things. I'd never seen movies where people did those things. It would have seemed to have come from my imagination. And when I was the age I was, which was between fifth and seventh grade, then it made sense in a particular way. But I now know that that's different. And I believe those ca that case is actually connected to it. That while that case was being initially prosecuted prior to getting to the Supreme Court, that part of how you get a case to the Supreme Court involves being able to accrue leverage and being able to present it and to have it be able to make a statement about the state of the system of jurisprudence in this country at the time it's allowed to be heard before the court and the time during which you're waiting for the opinion and the opinion is issued. And so in the meantime, all of those things, there could be a lot that could be staked on it. And what if you are somehow connected to a nexus of trying to assure that it makes it to the Supreme Court, regardless of whether it is issued a verdict or opinion in your favor or not? I had very vivid visualizations that are directly referenced in that case. And not only are they directly referenced in that case, say if I could go to the library, I could go into the library and I could check a hard-covered book. I know where to look. I know exactly where to look for that. To assure that what's presented online is an authentic representation of the official record of that case. Because what's presented online right now demonstrates that no less than two Targeted assassinations of people occurred based on cases referenced in that specific case. Two, and not only that, it is very possible that the hedging strategy for the last two years connected to the agrotech sector is also connected to that case, which would then also make a very big difference in terms of identifying the correlations between my mother's death and my effort to present a case in the federal district court. Would somebody have actually maybe placed a mark on an option that when I was a young girl, I was engaged in some process like say being selected for a gifted class and that at some point down the road, I may actually be involved with a case that's presented in a particular context or maybe a specific area and so that the lawyers or the judges involved with the affiliated professional society would get their delivery because that's what I believe is happening. Now on the other hand in that case it discusses distinctions between double jeopardy and the concept of evidence and how the same evidence may be evidentiary of more than one charge. It also makes distinctions between committing to the conspiracy and actually engaging in crimes associated with the conspiracy. And not being convicted of one at one time does not necessarily preclude being able to be charged and prosecuted for the other. I intend to deliver on that for myself. It was posted yesterday, and now my concern is that in May of this year, there was an alarm that was sounded for those who knew how to hear it. They were discussing how despite what's going on with COVID-19, that there might be some aspersions cast on uh, recipients of the assistance that was being offered by Treasury 
including companies that were identifying as being eligible for the small business assistance that didn't explicitly qualify as a small business, while other people who did were left languishing for a while. You know, it may be fortunate or unfortunate that I was told on site here in Dallas that during the SNL crisis, one of the things that happened is they set up assembly lines for applications on loans. And you would flip the loan application several times in the course of the day, hoping at the end of the day that that loan application via those derivatives flips or the period of time that they were literally being flipped would help pay off at a greater rate than what had happened going in. But meanwhile, what if you're trying to get the loan yourself? You're waiting for them to process your loan application and somebody else has taken it and is flipping it. And then what they're going to come back and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you today. I know exactly what that's like. They've done it to me consistently for at least five years that I've been actively tracking. They take my information. They take my case filing. They take my grievance. They take my report. And they flip it. And they flip it. And they flip it. And they always trash me at the end. And basically, I'm supposed to do it again. Except next time, I'm supposed to do it with a better attitude. What are they going to do with AIG? In these books I have right here, and in other things that were publicly accessible, both in print media and on the internet, they discuss what happened when AIG had to be turned over to the Treasury for a while, during TARP and later TALF. And one of the things that happened is that the government of the United States actually became the primary shareholders regarding interests associated with AIG. Now, one of the accusations that I've had for several years, by the way, is that there was something very disingenuous about TARP and its payout to the major financial institutions, specifically that some of the assistance they were offered was in the form of loans, but then the other assistance they were offered were in the form of subsidies that they did not have to pay back. So if you look at it on a ledger sheet, you have a bunch of numbers in black, including ones that ended up accruing some interest that then ended up getting paid back. So it was almost as if the government made money loaning it out to them to help them bail them out. But then you have columns of red numbers. I contend that that is a leftover holdout from a specific kind of branch banking modality that was justifiably challenged for its legality, constitutionality, and predilection for aiding and abetting organized crime. And they did that thing that they keep doing periodically, which is they claim the racket and try to play the racket for themselves. When AIG made the announcements about executive compensation that sounded those alarms in May of this year, one of the things they included was a discussion about stock splitting. Did AIG have anything to do with ju what just recently occurred with Citigroup? Was AIG in any way involved with the dividends and ex-dividends that were paid out in November just in time for the so-called COVID-19 relief to hit its six-month mark? See, my contention was in April that what they were doing with the COVID relief is they were making stock that they were going to consolidate all of the resources, the economic resources of the United States under the rubric of COVID-19. And then they were going to hook up deals with various financial institutions in order to give themselves and their most favored uh, uh, national actors status kickbacks in the form of the combined stock of the people of the United States. And meanwhile, other countries may or may not do the same thing. It's illegal. It's illegal. The only precedent there could possibly be for it was connected to the original Bank of the United States, which at the time, very prominent Americans, including the Secretary of State, who was asked specifically for his comments, and members of Congress and the Senate said it is blatantly unconstitutional. They didn't mince words. And then when it came time for the bank to go into effect, they did not renew the bank. 
Now, should they have challenged it and shut it down and exposed it for just how it was unconstitutional and engaged in a process of disgorgement and allow for a recharacterization so that from that time on, people that thought that they were going to try their uh, hand at speculating on those American girls and boys would know better? Yes, they should have. We have a perfect opportunity to do it again right now. We need to pay attention to our own history, and we need to recognize that these charlatans had no right. This isn't double jeopardy. It was an intentionally orchestrated plan of attack on us. This isn't a pandemic. This isn't a public health outbreak. This is a strategically coordinated terrorist campaign to undermine the government. I'm not ceding to them. If they split the stock like they split our brains and tried to get us all to play this uh, little bipolar COVID uh, uh, sexy girl ransom scheme on another level, I apologize. The precedents have already been set. You did not deliver.